Greg Miller, and before we get to the rest, I, of course, want to thank you all very, very much for coming out here today. But more importantly, not just coming here today, supporting PSI Love You XOXO as you have. One fan? More fans. All right, great. Uh, it's really weird to think about that this is our 64th week being PSI Love You XOXO. Uh, of course, here are some of the episodes you saw. Last year at PSX, we got to come out and do a panel, and of course, we'd only been a podcast. For, I'm bad at math. 11 weeks-ish? Uh, it wasn't a real thing yet, but the problem was that you guys supported us so much you made it a real thing. And I want to take a moment to keep thanking you, but at the same time, thank PlayStation. I don't know if you've noticed, we are the only podcast, Colin and I, that ever gets to come to PSX and do it. And while many of the haters on the internet will say, of course that's the case, they're Sony ponies, you know better than anyone that sometimes we're not nice to PlayStation. Sometimes we're not nice about consoles and things we don't like. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, PlayStation understands that. They respect that. They respect the relationship. They let us come here and entertain you. And they let us do that because you guys are so good to us. I hope you understand how the relationship works. You support us. They see that. And they understand that they have to speak to this community that is you. So thank you all very much. But enough of that. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage. He's the host of the Kind of Funny Games cast. He is the pure one, Tim Geddes. Also, the pride of Long Island, Colin Moriarty. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Doing Anywhere it. you want. Spread it out. Do what you want to do. Oh. It feels good. That's as far as I planned. Cool. I don't know what the rest of the show is going to be. Now, how are you guys doing? Great. Fantastic. Is this working? Is this working? It, it, Mike, Colin's mic isn't working. Can we get some Whatever. bass in his mic or just leave it off the okay. entire time? I'm talking to my mic, Colin. A lot of people would like that. You can whisper into Tim's mouth. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Is your microphone on? Did you slide the button on? It's, it's on. Hey! There's the voice. So first and foremost, yeah. we're, literally they grab us, they say it's about to go out, and you go, I got a funny story, Portillo peed. Oh, yeah. So, no, it was just funny because we, we, we you know, Aaron's watching Portillo. Yeah. Shout out and, to Aaron for taking care of Portillo. And, <laughs> and uh, Portillo's been in the little cage, you know, so he doesn't hurt himself, and, and there's a whole thing or whatever, but then we, t we give him a, bo a bone. And then we take, a and we, we take, yeah, we gave the dog a bone and we take it away from, and then he just goes in the kitchen and just, just goes in peace right there in the kitchen. So I think it was a retribute, like, you know, retaliation. He's going through a lot after the surgery, his knee's all jacked up. He's but excited, I felt like you excited for The Last of Us too. Yeah, he is excited <laughs> for The Last of Us too. But I felt like it was, uh, I felt like it was, uh, you know, I didn't want to leave that hanging because I was trying to tell you that story. I thought we were walking out together. Right. Uh, I thought it would you know, make you laugh because it, you know. It wasn't on the carpet, so I wasn't that upset good. about it. All right, good. I know I still uh, got to get the carpets clean. I know it's on my to-do list still. We're just never there on the weekends. Uh, that's riveting. This is riveting podcasting we're doing right now. <laughs> I assure you, no one came here being like, man, they're going to have some scoops about PlayStation today. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, I have a stick mic because uh, apparently I can't wear these because of my earrings. And they're like, can you take your earrings out? And I'm like, they haven't come out in 14 years, so no, yeah. I can't do that. Uh, but uh, I've also worn these before, and they haven't had any problems, but I'm going to defer... To the experts. And yeah, I was going to say, it's not, don't, nope, don't do that. That's, no, that was, nobody wants that happening. That was what they were afraid was going to happen yeah. with the microphone. Uh, also, has anyone noticed that the bathrooms here, it's like streets of rage in the bathrooms. Horrible. <laughs> it's so really like look, a When I first situation. got here, I had to pee pretty bad. And I walk in, and the men's bathrooms are all gated up. And I was like, is this some sort of like cruel joke? Like, is, is this how I get like the 69th PlayStation card? Like, I just need to hold this out and just like see what happens in the day? Eventually, they opened them up. And yeah, then I went in, and I was like, how does it smell like this? And they just it, opened it up. And how does it look like this is the bigger question. If you want to know, I mean, one of the, and I think the females in the audience get around this, so count your blessings. But one of the most shameful moments 
and it, thank God it doesn't happen to me often, is when you walk into the men's room and there's a line and you have to do that peek around and you see all the urinals open and you look at these guys, you're like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and you go around them because they're waiting to poop. They can just shit in the urinal. I Nobody don't understand. Wants it. You don't want anybody to know what you're doing in <laughs> there, there. But this is what happens to people. You shit in the urinal. You can shit in the trough. It's fine. It's all, oh. It all goes down this. Oh, I saw you once shit in a bush. So <laughs> it's all good. And I pooped in a urinal too. That's another time for another story. Tim. Yes. What have you played today? I played Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> and it feels damn good to be able to say that. It feels perfect. It yeah. looks amazing. It's in fur K. Totally down with that. Totally down with that. Totally down with that he is. Okay. You know what I'm not down with? What's that? Is I, I, so there's the Crash Bandicoot costume that uh, is running around. Of course, I got a picture with him. Of course. I was trying to be able to wear it here, and I would have just done the whole show wearing the outfit, but it, it didn't work out. I was on a bunch of side quests. The PR people were like, go find this person. Then I went, found them. Like, go find that person. Go find five golden fish to give this person. And then I gave up. But one day, I'll get to be Crash Bandicoot. But the Bandicoot is saved. Round of applause. Who's played Crash Bandicoot over there? I said, round of applause. Who's done it? And you raised your hand, a whole section of you right here. Please try to listen and stay on task today, all right? I can't do it anymore. Colin, have you played anything? No, I'm on a people-finding mission today. You're so, a people-finder? Yeah, so I went and saw my friends at Housemark. Yeah. Uh, Going out with them a little in a little while, and we're going to talk about things. Did you play and, the new game? Uh, saw they were doing direct feed for someone else when I went and saw Michael. Uh, met Eugene Jarvis, which was cool. Also uh, saw our friend Sean Norton. Uh, yeah, who's, who's a good buddy of Dreadnought. ours. Dreadnought. Yep, you know, working on Dreadnought, and uh, yeah, just so I'm just trying to roving around. Went and saw friends at Sony PR. I don't see them anymore. Right. Since we left IGN, you kind of do all the PR stuff. So these, you know, these are like practically yeah. strangers to me now. I went and played that house mark game. Yeah, it's good. Oh, I'm sure. No it surprise is. there. It's really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has anybody else played the house mark game? <laughs> Round of applause. We like it. Okay, good. Round of applause. Does anyone not like it? Good. You get out. <laughs> You're dismissed. This is a pro house mark panel if I've ever heard of one. Played that Star Wars VR experience. I played that as well. Woo. Right? No, that's the thing. You, you waved at me. Oh, you you got a Star Wars shirt on. Oh, okay, a lot that makes going on sense. Here. I was just like, all right, cool. dude. These bean bags are the best things. Why are we sitting here? Now they they when I made the bean bag reference yeah. during rehearsals, they were quick to point out they're not bean bags. But I've already forgot what, what, what they are. What are they? They say their name on them somewhere. Fat, Fat Joe's, Fat Joe, the guy who's saying what? Fat that's Joe? Joe. What's love what's got love? to do? Fat got to do with it? Big Joe. Big Joe. Big Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Franklin Sizemore. <laughs> You got a, you're a small, svelte man, but you got a big voice, don't you? <laughs> He's a good kid. I like him. He's a good kid. Uh, yeah, uh, the Battlefront VR was awesome. That was I mean, it went from like, oh, this is cool, and then it went into hyperspace. Yeah. Yeah. I think I had a moment with myself and a bunch of people around me. <laughs> no, I, I think my, for me the moment was being in it and then turning around and the droid's behind you and you can talk to the droid and it's like, chip, 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 chip. So the best <laughs> thing, this, is a little, this comes out Tuesday, definitely check it out. You can uh, kind of, there's a bunch of buttons you can press. Of course, I'm pressing all the buttons. I hit one, the target comes yep. out, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it's super, super awesome. And I finally made good on my promise that I've been talking about on PSX for a while, or PS I Love You, XOXO, whatever. Podcast Beyond, it's all interchangeable. You know what I'm talking about. Um, I went and played that there, Resident Evil 7. <laughs> Did it in VR. Not going to be delayed. That game's on point. It's going where it's going. I did do the thing, though, where I played it in VR. I played it on smooth mode. Have you done the demos yet, Carl? No, I don't want to see it. So. Did smooth mode, where it's like, you know, you're looking around, whatever, but you're controlling your x-axis with the yeah, right stick. And that did give me a little bit of the tummy, like, ugh. That, and that's my one concern with people playing it in VR. I'm afraid people are going to pop it on, go thinking they're going to play the entire way that, play the entire game that way, and then get to a point where they can't switch it off, get mad or whatever. But awesome. It did make me jump. I did jump at the mannequins. Got to do some less plays. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. There are mannequins? You're There's spoiling mannequins. it for me. The mannequin challenge is in Resident Evil? No, it's not the mannequin challenge. Enough about the games for a second. I like how professional. There's water bottles next to every chair here, and mm -hmm. they're not even like one. You know, I saw it, and I'm like, oh, someone left their water bottle. Like, but no, it's that's a new for water you. bottle. They it's brought very, you the water it's bottle. It's very exciting. Huh? They want you to drink some water. These are exciting times we're living in here right <laughs> is now. Is the water man somewhere here? Yeah, the water man might be here. <laughs> Don't bring out the water man! Brings up bad memories. <laughs> We all know I still feel man. like someone's just coming to the house and just 
fucking with you and <laughs> taking money from you, but they're never going to I told you that one day I came home and there was a note from the water man that he had come again. Yeah. Because I just don't pay the water bill. <laughs> <laughs> I have the money, but the thing always breaks. I want to, real quick too, we did all the thank yous in the beginning. I want to give a quick shout out slash apology to our interpreter over here. I, I didn't realize, of course, when Colin was talking about shitting in a trough, she had to translate all that. And I'm very sorry. Round of applause for your interpreter. <laughs> I love it. I also love the, the bleacher seats because, like, over like these two right here, they yeah. kind of they seem like they're judging us, you know? Like, they look like they have, like, their notebooks and stuff. Yeah, thank you. Cool. I like, yeah, like, right here, there's a clicker. A clicker. <laughs> she, she's like, no, nah, yeah, I'll be the judge of this podcast. I'll let you know how it comes out. I feel like I'm in a high school auditorium, kind of. <laughs> uh, so, who liked the conference? <laughs> right? Who didn't like the conference? Why? Why would you do that, sir? No, the conference was great, right? Fantastic. We have the whole recap up there, but I was super stoked about it. Love Naughty Dog opening, closing. Love more Uncharted, love more Last of Us, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But of course, I think my favorite part was that Vita. The Vita being out there, the Vita being out there, Gio Corsi out there representing, doing everything he's gotta do to do the Vita. And that's why I gotta ask. This is, this is where I think it all becomes paramount. Who doesn't have a PlayStation Vita? You don't, boo. sir, why don't you have one? Don't boo him! You're Ladies the and gentlemen, we were all there once. We were all there once, lost in the woods. No sense of right and wrong. Kissing everything in sight. Love potion number nine. Now, why don't you have one? You don't need a portable game because you don't have a long commute. You don't have one either? When did he show you the light? Three months ago. You haven't bought one yet? Well, come up here. I'm going to give you a PlayStation Vita. Now, this is no ordinary PlayStation Vita. This is a Vita library all in one. So you're getting Wipeout. You're getting Resistance. You're getting Wolf Among Us. You're getting Mod Nation Racers. You're getting World of Final Fantasy. You're getting a little game called Volume. You're getting Stealth Inc. Ultimate Edition. And you're getting a little game probably nobody's ever heard of called Shovel Knight. Go forth in game. You're like Santa Claus. Huh? You're like Santa. I'm something like Santa, that's right. Much uh, younger. Santa's fat, though. All right, don't bring up the Team Fat stuff right now. Again, the Vita Island shirt is snug. That's why I'm just wearing tighter clothes. That's why people think I'm losing the weight. I'm not. All right, that's enough of that. So what next, Tim? What do you want to do? I don't know. Do you want to give more things away? You want to sure, wait for that? Away. What do you got in there? I want to give this away. Now, who's that from and what is it? Bloodborne is from Santa Greg. No, 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 no. This is from, who listens to PS I Love You XOXO? Does anyone remember episode 63? We did one of those indie game shout outs saying they'd be here. You should come play it. Remember Forgotten Legion, our friend Yuchi. He brought a whole bunch of PlayStation 4 games. Not to promote the game Fallen Legion, which you should go play over there. But more importantly, because he is a true best friend. He had these extra games. He wanted to share them with all of you. So who needs Bloodborne? You need Bloodborne I right see there? one. I see right. it. Oh, I'm going. Okay. I'm going. Okay. Well, here. Take it all out there. Here. We're taking more? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on. This I'm going to have this Tim run through the crowd disaster, giving out like. games. We got Ratchet and Clank. We have Yay. the Uncharted Collection. We have Last of Us Remastered. We have Uncharted 4. Okay. Tim, distribute those games. Don't, don't throw them like we did at Podcast Beyond. Don't throw Beyond. them. <laughs> we don't want to hit anybody in the face. All right. We're going here. You now, get this. You get Uncharted 4. Come on. Oh, I want you to this. go all the way to the back. I'm going Tim, all the way to the back. Look at him go. We're going all the way to the back. Tim, Tim, What's up, Tim, everybody? Tim, Tim, he loves Tim, this shit Tim. way too much. You get that. <laughs> you get this. Hello, hello. No, I'm going around. I'm going around. I never saw Tim run before. He's going to be so winded. <laughs> you get this. <laughs> what? So winded. You get that. That's all I got. Not I'm sorry, guys. Tim, come on now. How you doing? Walk it through. Hello. Tim, how are you feeling? 
It's the beanbag C. <laughs> or, sorry, the Big Joe C. How, Tim, how hot are you right now? I'm out of breath. Yeah, you're out of breath and out of that. I'm not made for this. Oh my God, I love you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, while Tim catches his breath, please welcome your first guest. He is not a coward. He is the man who gave you Twisted Metal, God of War, and soon drawn to death. Ladies and gentlemen, David Jaffe. I love you. No, no, let's do the whole thing from up here. I want to go, go back up. Get down. Another ride. <laughs> David Scott Jaffe, how the hell are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm excellent. Good. Where is your game? I made a prediction that right here on this stage, I know you guys, it would be released day and date, ready to go. I know. We, well, we made a deal with Sony. We're going to do the mayonnaise game two first. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Shu said we could do it. There's, like sure. two, there's two platinums in that one. So it's <laughs> Unprecedented. But I know that. I heard you guys when I was driving up yesterday, and I was like, I, you guys are pretty often correct. And, and, and I'll be honest with you. I mean, you guys... Uh, it's not like we sit around at Bartlett Jones or the guys in Sony San Diego and go, shit, what are we going to do? I don't fucking know. Turn on PSX. I love, you know. Yeah. We, but that said, it, what, when you guys had some interesting conversations, especially about sort of what was happening with early access and free to play and stuff, you would be incorrect if you thought we weren't listening because it was definitely interesting. And sure. that played into a number of conversations we had. So I don't know how we got on this topic. I haven't had my ADHD meds today. I re I'm not joking. I actually am on them and I didn't have them. And so this is going to be interesting. Um, but so what no, were we you're talking doing about? Great. I mean, you're leading to the questions I think that are interesting. I mean, yeah. since, what, remind me, was it, a, was it a PSX where we saw a drawn death for the first time? We, uh, <laughs> we, cl well, we closed out the show, the very first PSX. Okay. And no one lets me forget it. It's like, you fucking closed the show out with that fucking game? <laughs> Sorry. You know, we love it. We think it's great. A lot of people think it's great. But, but uh, thank you very much. No, 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 but, no, no. Hold no, on one second. Hold yeah, on yeah, one yeah. second. Because this is one of the problems I have with you, David Jaffe. I got a bone to pick with you. All right? So you're going to sit there and you're going to shut up and you're going to take this. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed when people were, somebody was giving you shit on Twitter about you getting uh, an autograph right, signing. Is this the jury? What is this? No, don't get distracted. What? Do not get distracted. We got a bone to pick. All right, go ahead. Go you ahead. were getting shit on Twitter about getting an autograph signing. So you got yeah, them, you got in the mud. You gave him a one-two punch. Who You're was like, that? Oh, it they was uh, Wario, uh, Wario 64, who I'd never met before. Yeah. And I'm glad, you know, we had a nice coming together online. And it was like, all right, no, no worries. That's fine. But he was just like, yeah, Jeff, he's fucking signing at PSX, LOL. And I'm like... Oh, fuck you, motherfucker. Yeah. It's like, Sony's like, hey, do you want to do this signing thing? I'm like, uh, sure, if you want me to. I'm like, yeah, sure, we'll do it. See, no that was the end of it. It wasn't, and, and this little fucker, um, although I have no problem with him now, and I d genuinely appreciate the fact that he reached out. I don't, I don't. It really did upset me, though, because there was another guy. The other guy's the one I saw uh, you arguing with. Uh, a don't, lot you guys, don't need to name I'm names happy to trolls. name him. No, I'm happy to just forget him. about the truth. No, no, because he's a, he's a, he's a beloved personality, which is Kyle Bossman, right? A lot of you guys must love Kyle, I assume, from what I gather. You guys know what I'm talking about? Okay, right. So, you know... They're all tentative to say they know him because they feel like you're I, I, I Look, yeah. I like Keely a lot. I feel bad for him. I actually want to bottle up his tears and sell them as potions, you know, from the Game Awards. But, um, but I do. I, I've, always <laughs> liked, I've always liked Jeff a lot. Um, and he's on Jeff's show, and, I, and I'm sure he's a great guy. But the two times I've seen him talk about Drawn to Death... Um, I'll give you a great example. Let me, I'm, again, these meds, they're wonderful, and if you don't have them, but when you guys rail on God of War, and you do, I'm so okay with that because there's logic to back it up. You've played the games. Would I love everyone to like everything we do? Absolutely, that would be awesome, okay? But there's only one Kojima, and that and I and him, right? So I wish you guys loved Kratos more. I wish you guys loved God of War more. But when you, when you, when you rail against it, there's logic there. It's like, we played it, here's the problems we had, how can I have a problem with that? It's like, sure, absolutely. Not everyone's going to like what we do, and I love that you like some of the stuff we do. And, you know, but this guy, this Kyle guy, from what I gather from the two things I've seen when he talked about it, never fucking picked up controller and played this game. And it's not the fact that he doesn't like it. It's, there's just this sort of mean-spirited, snarky bullshit that I think 
for, 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 for 80% of our gaming community that is wonderful and open and inclusive, there's that 20% that drives me up the fucking wall. And the older I get, the less tolerance sure. I have for it. Um, and so... I'm with you. And you're making... We're getting... We're back on the road to the that, point I was trying right. to make here. Is that Pick a Pick me up again, Greg. It was so great. All right, come here. <laughs> I'm going to... No, 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 no. You guys have to sing I Had the Time of My Life and then I'm going to go at the right moment. I'm not, I'm not doing this, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this, not, uh, this, we, this, this you can this, 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 no, this, this is a Neo, do this is a Neo it, Gaff do gift it, waiting to happen. Do I'm it. doing it. All right, fine, fine. No, I'm gonna sit down, I... sit down. Let's go, let's go, let's go, come on. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you got a handful of that, of Jaffy's ass there. <laughs> <laughs> he came in too. He came in too high. There was nothing that I could was, do. Uh, that was uh, uh, that was All sexy. Right, that was sexy. You were saying, I love the singing though. That was a very, very nice. nice well, let me let me, let me let me. I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, like Drawn to Death is such a novel idea. It's a, a great idea. Since we first okay. saw it at PSX when we were still at IGN, we loved the idea. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, it's different. I think there's a lot of just the same old shit out there, which is sometimes fine. I play Call of Duty every year, and I think it's awesome. Yeah. But it's it's you know it, it's something new and it's something unique. Were you, you know, talking about early access and the way things were kind of going with Sandy, Sony San Diego and kind of trying some different things as, you know, kind of your producer or whatever they were doing, XDev, when did you become worried about the things we were talking about? Was, in other words, because you're a very smart man, you didn't need it to hear it from us. Did you kind of know that this was a problem before we started talking about it? Well, no. So, uh, you guys can still hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um... So we never had a problem with free-to-play because our whole sort of mantra was we were doing free-to-play by a team that hates free-to-play. And so our whole concept was um, we felt we had, and, there, and there's a million reasons that we did this game with Sony, not the least of which is uh, that it's Sony and they're always just wonderful places to create and collaborate with. And that was the main reason. But there was also the reason that when we sat with Scott Rohde and said, we believe in free-to-play in the sense that it casts this very wide net and everybody gives a game a chance. And for a game that looked like ours, which is very unique looking, and for a game that plays like ours, which you pick it up, and if you just play it like a normal shooter, A, hopefully if you're playing against someone experienced, you'll get your ass kicked, because it really is meant to be more like a cross between, you know, Quake Arena and Super Smash Brothers, right? Um, but free-to-play made sense, and it made sense with a business model that wasn't going to have any pay to win. There was, and there, that's why it was so easy for us to sort of pivot because there was no gameplay affected when we pivoted. But ultimately, I do think what you guys were hitting on that was correct, at least for the moment, is on PC, the perception of free to play gives us that wide net, but on console, there was just, the, there, were, there were the rumblings of, we could get into trouble if we stay on this path because what we're seeing having nothing to do with the game, just in terms of sort of how console players, you know, the majority of them seem to be responding to a business model, and there's a, 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 a correct suspicion of the business model that they bring to it that maybe PC gamers, not hardcore PC gamers, but just, you know, general, maybe they're just not as savvy to. Whereas console gamers are like, free to play, fuck you, that's pay to win, I hate you, die. And it was like, okay. Um, so it was more of realizing that no matter what we were trying to do, uh, this just made more sense. And certainly when you guys talked about it, it was like, you know, I mean, we, we fucking pull it up at work and pull up the, you know, I listen to you guys on the podcast, but we'll pull it up on, on YouTube. And it was like, yeah, no, they're, they're saying a lot of the same stuff and some other stuff we hadn't thought about. So yeah, it was just, it was sort of reading the tea leaves based on what we were saying and based on sort of what the console audience was uh, responding to. Great, because I, th I, th I mean, I think you agree, Greg, that I think it, it seems like, I mean, what, I mean, we're saying the obvious, but we, what do we really know about business? But it just seems like it's such a cool idea. You know, you want to see it thrive, and I that, think that's I mean, what that's you're saying. The, you know, the reason I, I remember that it was a PSX, because I remember seeing it, and then I remember interviewing you and playing it. Yeah. Playing it that first time and being like, oh, yeah, like, I, it, it's this weird thing. And this sounds like I'm, I'm blowing you here, but I'm not. Uh, where, we like, did, you we make... just did that metaphorically. Exactly. Good point. You make games that I... I I shouldn't like, right? Like, Calling right. All Cars was a game that on paper wouldn't have, I don't think, you. Hey, it's this car combat weird thing you're doing. You're, I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. But playing it, I loved. And playing Drawn to Death, I was like, oh, this is awesome. But I never wanted to jump into the betas and do all this stuff and play test it and do, get, bored, get not burned out on it before yeah. it ever got there for trophies. No, I mean, it, it, that's one of the things that's been interesting to me in listening to you guys and, and listening to, like, you guys respond to the conference yesterday is that, you know, the more I do this, you know, 
I, I hear you guys and I hear so many of, of y'all talk about, you know, what it is that, that gets you excited about games. And it's so, there's so much about the story and there's so much about the characters and all of these things. And obviously, I mean, Drawn to Death is filled with, with story and all that stuff. But for me, the older I've gotten, the more I've done it. After God of War, it just solidified in my brain that I just believe mechanics are really for me where it's at and for the games that I want to work on. And so it is, it is nice when someone sort of, when you have that meeting of the minds and you do play it, even though it's like, this isn't what I should like. Um, and, and there's a positive response. It's definitely appreciated by us making it. So that's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so what I was trying to say is that Sorry. don't talk. Don't talk. Look at me. David, make eye contact with me. David? <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, right here. Right here. Anybody, if I had keys, I'd jingle them. <laughs> no. You're a guy who used to, does stuff that I used to do, which is get, getting caught up with the vocal minority. Because I see you do it where you, you see somebody, a troll says something to you and you feel like you got to respond. And a long time ago, best friends out here, they tweeted me and were like, I understand that it sucks to have somebody insult you and be a dick about it, right? But for every one of those, there's a hundred that would love any moment of your time. And so I want you to remember that there's an audience I, I like do. this. But, but if I may just respond to that, though. Sure. You are right, and the, and the applause is, is, is noted uh, because I, I agree with that. But that makes, that sort of, that, that's, that's semi-condescending because it makes the assumption that I don't appreciate and acknowledge the nice stuff too. Sure. And I do. And I'm always like, thank you from the team. I have people tweeting saying, oh my God, Twisted Metal 2, blah, blah, blah. And I will say, even though I haven't talked to a lot of those guys in years, I'll be like, hey, on behalf of all of us who made it, because there was a lot of us, we appreciate that. And I'll always respond to a positive comment. But I do think, like I said, um, there, there's a point where it's like, you know what, you can be a dick, but, but you can't do it if I see it and just, you know, you're, you're not going to not at least have your dickishness acknowledged publicly because I'll sure. fucking dot that at sign in a heartbeat. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, so that's all I'm saying. That's what, that's David. Yeah. That's, that's why we love you. Uh, before we let you go, when are we getting drawn to death? I'm sick of waiting. You want, you're on the stage and now okay, okay, well, let me, it right okay, now. No, no, I, I'm not going to tell you, but here's what I will tell you. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, this is super important because, again, it goes back to what you guys are always saying. And so I hope there is some mental pats on the back of like, hey, people are listening. How many shows have I listened to you guys going, this is stupid to put out Titanfall and Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty all in the same time. This is stupid to load everything in March because if we load it in March just because that's the end of the fiscal year, you're really hurting your chances of success. And so I will say, like I said, there's a million reasons we were able to work with Sony and are thrilled to be working with Sony on this game. Another one being is that they have time and time again strategically said, what is the best way to release this game, whether it is going from free to play to where we are now, or just when we're gonna put it out. And that is appreciated by us because it is giving the game sink or swim, fail or succeed, the biggest chances of finding an audience. And so that's why, could I tell you I would, but it's, it's not my information to share. You'd have gotcha. to ask Jeremy or, or Shu when he comes out, so. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, well, David thank you Jackie. guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, dude. Yep. You'll right. find your parting gifts down here in the this pit. Way? Yeah, not the, don't cross in front of the interpreter. Go that way into the darkness. Someone will help you. <laughs> well, thankfully, the clicker is on that side, not over here. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for your next guest, the president of Sony Worldwide Studios, Shuhei Yoshida. Now again, to be, come up. to be clear, Shu, <laughs> they were saying Shu. La last year at the PSX panel, there was so much confusion if they were booing you. And it was like, no, 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 they were saying Shu, they were saying Shu. You boo Shuhei Yoshida, yeah. you get the <laughs> fuck out of here. I like, I, like the, <laughs> I like the Yoshida chants at the, the conference. Yeah, that was great. Yes. That was good. Good work. Yoshida! 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 Love it. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. It was great to see you giving life advice to Dave Jaffe. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to raise him right. He I, clearly I, went astray. We got to get him back on the right track. I, I've known Dave since his, you know, twisted metal days, PS1 days, so over 20 years. Yeah. And uh, what you don't know about Dave is he has matured a lot. Yeah. Yeah. He's much mellower now. My favorite 
moment of watching you two from afar yeah. was there was once a Twitter conversation where he was ranting about something, uh, and you responded, uh, nice to hear from you, David. Please finish your game. <laughs> it was Twisted, when, he, when he was working on Twisted Metal PS3, I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> now, Shu, there's a lot to talk about with PSX. First, Thank you. you return to the stage, a little game called Pat Upon. Um, <laughs> before we get to any of that, though, last night you went to Portillo's. How was it? Yesterday. Yeah. I tweeted a lot. Like, I visited indie games and many great games I was, you know, promoting. But the most popular, most liked tweet was when I tweeted from the Portillo's. <laughs> <laughs> I got over 2,500 likes. Yeah, yeah. And the food was amazing. Food was good. <laughs> like, when, I, when Greg found out I was going to visit the restaurant, you know, he sent me the link of, uh, you know, if you're the first time visiting Portillo, this is what you should eat, a video that he did. So we were watching in the car, you know, group of us uh, together, and uh, we had, like, Adam boys, you know, from Chicago, right? Yeah. yeah, he was like, oh, let's see what Greg is recommending. Yes, 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 yeah. So we ended up ordering, all, you know, all of them, except for that uh, uh, thick... Uh, chocolate cake chocolate. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. was a bit too much. So we didn't, <laughs> we didn't go dog. for it. It's we good. want you here for many more PSXs to come. So yeah, <laughs> but don't... the hot dog with everything was yeah. amazing. Yeah. And that the Italian uh, steak Italian sandwich. Beef, yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Round of applause. Who's been to Portillo's at PSX? Yeah. <laughs> We gotta get some kind How of deal you? with them. No, oh. I got here late last night and I was like texting people where to we go. We can still go. That restaurant's packed. Who wants to go from here to our signing to Portillo's? Ah. <laughs> We're gonna need 300 Ubers. <laughs> <laughs> so Shu. Yep. How good did it feel to come out on stage? Very good. I felt, I felt like, it, it, you know, I love PSX because PSX is this. It is hanging out with our best friends. It is having you come out of the conference. It is having Geo make a, 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 a Dave Lang reference when he's talking about wind jammers. <laughs> and everyone be like, yeah, I get it. All right. <laughs> I know Dave Lang because it's his community. And that's what I miss. I missed you at E3. I was happy to have you come out of this conference. I, I've, been, but I've been saying the PSX is my favorite event of the year because it feels so good. You know, the, all the people here, thousands of people are PlayStation fans. And they are, everyone is so happy, so happy. And developers are here, you know, our teams and the Indies guys, and they are so happy to meet with, you know, fans. And, uh, you know, even Dave is very happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, he, he was standing on the, at the, you know, booth of, you know, Dawn to Death last year to see, to get the, you know, uh, direct feedback from people who are playing. And he said he's going to do that again uh, today. So the same, same way. All the developers, you know, coming to PSX, they are really looking forward to come here to see, you know, their fans and uh, get the direct, you know, feedback and uh, have conversations with people. Well, so, so, so I am very happy to be the part of, you know, PSX again. And for me, the make, you know, making presentation on the stage on at PSX, uh, it was the first time for me. So I'm so happy to be here. It's good to have you. <laughs> Thank you. So you've been doing conferences for a long time, and they're always great. But recently, they've been Year of Dreams amazing. Like, do you know that going out there? Like, did you know yesterday coming out, you're like, this is the best conference of all time, <laughs> and I get to make people's dreams come true? Crush Monday Coop. <laughs> you saved. <laughs> I, Thank you, you. You know that I was the, uh, one of the producers of Original Crash Bandicoot. Oh, trust me. I know. So, so I'm I, was, so, I was so looking forward to play. I am still so looking forward to play. But the graphical upgrade that they have done, but still the exact same placement of everything. It feels it's just amazing. Right. It's amazing. Yeah, so, so I was watching people play uh, at the back uh, uh, of the, uh, in the PR room yesterday. And, uh, looks exactly the same, but with, you know, beautiful graphics, so. And, 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 and the Patapon and the Loco Loco. Patapon! Yeah, so, the, you saw the graphics, right? It's amazingly sharp, you know, 1080p and 4K native graphics. So everything graphically has been redone, our team has done. But the game itself is intact, exactly like original. 
with some additional you know, enhancements that you know, I hinted. Like uh, things like uh, when you play Loco Loco, there's a section in the game that the Loco Loco sings, right? And uh, that you know, sings, comes out of the controller, for example. And it's, uh, it's uh, you know, so something like that, you know, playing, playing uh, uh, Parappa, there's a vibration, like uh, giving you the, like, uh, timing. Yeah, so there's some additional help to make it more enjoyable. Our, <clears throat> we, were, we were kind of, you know, just guessing, and I don't know if this is true or not, but is the intent with, not so much Crash, because that's not necessarily an IP you guys control anymore, but with uh -huh. Patapon uh -huh. and Loco Roco and Parappa, are you guys kind of testing the waters to see if there's interest to make a new one? Because it's been a very long time since there's been a new, you know, I was in high school when Parappa the Rapper 2 I came think out. people would love a Patapon 4. So is, so is the intent is the intent just to put these games out again for people to enjoy them, or is there are you guys going to study the numbers and see if there's interest in, in bringing those IP back? You no, know, yeah, there are many IPs that we get you know people's um, request to uh, bring back or create a new game or remaster, but uh, because uh, our resources are limited and uh, we tend to like to work on new IPs like Horizon or Days Gone or you know. Yeah, so we have to make balance of what we, uh, how we, you know, manage our resources. And uh, when we see some uh, uh, opportunity, like uh, this time, you know, with a, a complete remake of uh, uh, remaster of uh, Parappa, uh, Patapon, and, uh, and uh, Loco, Loco. Uh, Loco Loco, and also Wipeout, uh, I, I, yeah, we, we think this is a great opportunity to be able to give something you know, back to the people who are uh, asking for. So of course, you know, when these games do well, uh, that means you know, there are lots of people you know, still uh, like these IPs, so you know, we might be able to come up with something. Well, you, yeah. you definitely got to you know, pat upon, scream at a Greg. That was it's like a banshee on the on the. I'll help out however I can. You tell me what you need me. I'll be in there. I'll roll up my sleeves. I'll be designing pat upons. I don't care. So. Uh, what we were talking about on the show, I, you probably have, you've been busy, you probably haven't had a chance to, you know, I know, because you're a loyal listener to PS I Love You, which is awesome. Uh, we were talking about how now there's a nice stack of AAA exclusives now that, that are, you know, Horizon and then Gran Turismo and then all the way moving out to, you know, Death Stranding and now The Last of Us Part Two. How are the, I know you can't get, give too much information, but only one of those games has an actual release date, so how do you see this kind of shaking out over the next three years or so? I mean, is there an order of operations? Can you tell us? When we can, ex you know, like, uh, is Days Gone a 2018 game, for instance, or is that a 2017 game? Like, how or are you guys going to release date or announce release dates when we get closer? Yeah, we we definitely have learned by our you know mistake of announcing release dates too early. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, so we'll be more cautious, you know, doing so because the, these days, you know, game making games on PS4 generation. Uh, is uh, the ambition of the teams are uh, uh, making the game much bigger and more complex and takes much longer time to uh, even the game might get to alpha stage, everything is in, but getting them to the beta stage, the game's being tested and tuned and polished, takes much longer than before. So the teams are learning as they you know, work on this generation that you know, what they had learned before cannot apply the same way this generation. So that's why uh, we unfortunately had to move, you know, release date of, you know, many titles uh, in the past and uh, uh, made people disappointed, you know, they, so, and uh, you are not nice to us, you know, of course, you know, because <laughs> that's totally fair. Uh, so we have learned from that, and going forward, uh, we'll be much more cautious and uh, wait until the time that we are really confident to hit the date. So that might answer, you know, because you were talking about, is, are you guys going to nail the horizon date? Are you guys confident that you're going to hit that? Because Greg, Greg feels like it's, you're right? For it's, what, horizon? Yeah. I think they're confident in the horizon okay. date. I was the one. Oh, okay. Tim was was the one. Are you guys Shit. confident in the horizon date? Prove me wrong, Shu. That's... What I can tell is Horizon is amazing, amazing game. Yeah, sure. I, I, I got to play it, you know, as, as it gets developed. It's, uh, it's to me, you know, I, I, I'm a huge, you know, action, uh, third-person action game fans. And, okay. Uh, okay. 
well, there's a Horizon ad playing out. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Horizon, <laughs> Greg Way. Aloy. Well, there they go. Nice. Yeah, so, so I, I always enjoyed you know, playing Horizon for the last two years as an action game. But you know, recently, as I got uh, my hands on there, I understand it's much deeper games on the you know, uh, RPG aspect as well. And there are lots of missions, like side missions and open world. So uh, there are a lot to enjoy from the game when it comes out. I'm, I'm, ex I'm so excited. I mean, it, like, we're really, really, really. I, mean, I, 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 I played it extensively at E3, and it was, what I it was know, awesome. Shu, you hear Colin say it all the time that he feels like this could be the next big franchise for PlayStation. Thank you. Thank you for that. Do you guys look at it that way, or do you feel well, that too? I, I think uh, Colin is right. <laughs> 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 yeah, you were more right than wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you when you came over for dinner the other a couple <laughs> weeks ago, you know, she lets me know that you know. You, you oh know, yeah. Yeah. She was not always time. right, but well, I'm gonna continue to power mm. of lies. Mm. I am yeah. indeed always yeah. right. So, she was there concerned about showing uh, Last of Us Part Two? Because you're talking about you don't want to put release dates on stuff too far out. But you show Last of Us Part Two, and then it has to be very clear that this is super early. Yeah, yeah. I assume it's, it's going to be super early. Yeah, it's just uh, showing that announcing that we are on to that, but it's going to be sometime. Yeah. Sometime. But sometime. 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 Yeah, I yeah. keep telling you Stay guys, tuned. there's a lot of ambitious people that think this game's coming out in 2018. I'm telling you, it's not. So just relax about it. We'll but see. I'd like to be wrong. That Death Stranding, if Death Stranding came out tomorrow, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. But. But an Uncharted game is coming out next year. It sure is. Yeah. Who's excited for Uncharted? <laughs> Chloe. So good to have Chloe back. Oh my gosh. And Nadine. I like Nadine so much in the game. I'm ex excited to see her expanded upon. I, actually, I was watching your reaction show at the beginning, and you almost nailed the, you know, who are the, you know, characters. Greg was right. Hashtag Greg was right. <laughs> so, yeah, no, sorry. It doesn't ring. It doesn't, uh, the it doesn't roll off not, your tongue not liking at, all, that. at all. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, actually, that reminds me that I have to balance, you know, Dave, you know, I'm one of the biggest fans of Kyle Bosman. <laughs> he, Damn. Little, little he's balance. so funny. And, uh, <laughs> what Dave doesn't understand is, you know, Kyle is for being funny. You know, he used to be a stand-up comedi comedian and... Uh, he, he has a heart in the game, but he has to be funny, right? So sometimes that kind of touches in the creative's you know, mind in a long way. But uh, I, I love Kyle, and Kyle's show. He's so funny. I, I understand what, I mean, yeah. I, I, I get what Jaffe's trying to say, though, because <laughs> sometimes you see that kind of stuff out there, and it, yeah. and it hurts you, you know? Like, sure, yeah. I, well, I, I get it. People talk shit about me all the time. It hurts, you know, like to, to see that kind of stuff, especially when they don't know you or they're just saying things you didn't even say and stuff like that. Right. I'm sure he gets, you know, it's amplified with him. So I understand that, you know. It's hard, it's hard to, you know, you do a very good job of it, but a lot of people don't, you know. Well, so. I mean, if, if you ever want to get out of getting internet hate, just get cancer. That really stopped it. The, the things of I want Greg Miller to die pretty much stopped when I almost died. <laughs> so if you can do that, that's the easy win. But Shu, how do you feel, how do you deal with your internet celebrity these days? Because, like, do you mind when there's a gif of you? That when there's a gif of you in a submarine attacking another company or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, you know, I, 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 I get some criticisms and the people are uh, unhappy and angry and uh, uh, sometimes persistent, you know, sending me the same tweet, you know, but I, I can, you know, block or mute, you know, those people, so I, I'm fine. So then, Shu, where, where does PlayStation go from here? We're wrapping up the panel. We're wrapping up PSX. What's, ne what's the big, for you, what is the next big vision you're seeing? What's the next thing? Yeah, so th this year was a huge year, you know, like Sean Layden talking about. We launched, you know, three new hardware. And especially for me, you know, launch of PSVR was huge. You know, we've worked on this for many, many years. And it's um, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Do you guys well, like I VR? <laughs> And I've been saying that working on PSVR, I, I feel like, you know, 20 years ago when we were working on PlayStation 1, the very first PlayStation, that we are very excited that we are able to use uh, real-time 3D graphics for the console games for the first time. And uh, since then, you know, 20 years, the games are still making 
progress in the games are amazing using 3D graphics. The same way, I feel that the, this is the first year of consumer proper VR. And uh, I can see, you know, going ahead like uh, 20 years of constant, you know, advancement and the uh, developers will learn how to use this new media, new technology, and uh, create some new genre or new experiences, you know, using this tech. And even this year, with the launch of PSVR, there are some amazing, you know, small experiences being created. And uh, it's, it's, it's much, much um, faster than I was anticipating in terms of adoption and understanding by, you know, developers. You know, that speaks, you know, loud about how uh, game, you know, community, game development community has, you know, the tools and the ideas and uh, uh, talent that there are, there are lots of talent that the game industry have to be prepared to work on this new you know, medium. So next year you know, is the you know, start of the software mm. uh, uh, advancement you know, using you know, VR. And uh, for, for the regular console games, you know, like you know, we, we have many games that we have announced but are not released as yet. So we will be continue to be working on to perfect these games, and each one is so important because each one, each game is taking much longer and much more people to create, and uh, so we have to do it right until the very, very end. So that's that's the job that you know we are working on next year. Well, Shu, we wish you luck. Everybody, wish him luck. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Our time is through. We're going to go to the back now for a meet and greet. It's supposed to be a signing, but we brought a photographer, and we want to make sure everybody gets a touch in the first hour. So maybe if we just did that, we could actually get a photo and put them up on our Facebook, and then you'd all have a photo, and we'd all be real happy, right? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been PSI Love You XOXO Live at PSX 2016. Thank you for coming, and know that it's been our pleasure to serve you. Thank you. Thank you.